last week we spoke about the last two weeks or the last two shiurim we've been speaking about the uh Elkana, the wife of Hana. And last week we spoke about Hina. And today I want to speak about Hana. Now we've already spoken to Hana about Hana in one dimension. That was during before Rosh Hashanah when we spoke about her prayer. But today I want to speak about the other side of Hana. Not necessarily the prayer, but Hana in three dimensions. The first dimension is Hana, the wife. The next dimension is Hana, the personality. Then comes Hana, the mother. And there's a sort of metamorphosis, a change in the whole behavior of Hana, as we see as the chapter, as the Perek as Shmuel describes his mother. He comes in three different ways. Okay, and that's what we're going to discuss today. How we'll manage everything because it's Quite a deep subject. Now let's start off the first part of the chap, uh, the first part of the peric. I'm going to put share screen on. We'll go backwards and forwards the whole time. Now, please, if anybody has questions, I will stop after every five seven minutes in order to accept questions. Okay, because I don't want it to be a lecture. I'm not a good lecturer. I give a shear. The shear means to say that we discuss things. Right. Um, so let's start off. The Pasuk says the following. Ladim, Lachana, and Yeladim. Vala Isha Ume Romi Amim Lamima, and used to go up every time to Shtahavot, Vizboach Lashem, to bow down and to offer up sacrifice to Akrushbochu Bishilo. Sham Shnei Bene Eli, and there were two sons of Eli, of Neo Pinchas, Konim Lashem. Etc., etc., Vahia Yom Vizbach El Kana, and El Kana offered up sacrifices, and he gave Nina, and Hanai gave a double portion. Et Hana Ahev. And he loved. Hashem Sagarachma. The Kiastat Sarata. Last week we spoke about this whole business of the Kas, how Nina made her angry. Isagar Hashem Adrachma. Kenya says Shana Bishana. This will happen every single year. And what happens? It's a stage. Kenya says Shana Bishana. Miad. Midei Alota. Bet Hashem. Kentich. Chisena. She cried and she couldn't eat anything. Why are you, why are you crying? Why don't you eat? Why are you so despondent? I'm better than 10 people. This is another wife. Another wife, and that's how I've described it to the top. And what does it say here? If we look in sentence number, sentence two, Pasuk Bet, Veloshte Nashim, Shem Achat, Chana, Shem Ashenit, Pua, Pnina. Okay, already we spoke about it, going to one explanation, the Ketava Kalaba, and we spoke about the Yacha, the relationship between Elkana and, and Chana, but here now I want to speak about the other side. What was Chana's perspective? What does it say? Shem Achat, Chana. Shmuel is very particular the way he writes. And he doesn't say Shem Ha'achat Chana, but Shem Hashenit Nina. Shem Achat Chana. Says the Malbim, Why isn't he written the definite article before Chana, Shem Ha'achat, before the word Chana, Mishpat Alashon? More teaches us, Nasa et Chana Odem. There was only one at the beginning, only one called Chana. And afterwards, Nasait Nina Leha. And afterwards, he married her. It's to put Divrei Chazal, and Chazal are particular 
about the way they the way they learnt is from Asher Atachana when Chana sees Shiakara Yatsa Oto she went up to him she went up to Elkana Vikachot Pnina Aleha and she advised him to take Pnina Ulaiti Banemi Mena perhaps will be able to have children for her Moshe Asta Sara him the same way Sarah did with um, with Hagar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So therefore, the first wife or the principal wife is Hannah. And only once she saw that he wasn't having any children, then automatically, sorry, I seem to have a bit of a problem with my camera. Um, and since we, okay, and that's what happened. Now, Chazals do say that. Chazals say the following. Even Sherata Chana, since Chana saw Shelo Yalda in line number 25, Amra, she said, Marlo, I will tell him, Shiachnis Tzara Lebeiti, let him put another wife in my house. Umitoch Zeh, and this way, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will see what I've done. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will see what I've done. That what? That in actual fact, I brought in Another wife. That's what happens. So now, all of a sudden, Hana is left alone completely. Nina, Shoch Hashem has children, and Hana is all by herself. And now, what does this mean in actual fact? We have a fascinating insight into this whole concept of, of two wives. What happened? In the Mesirat Nefesh of one wife to more than another wife. What's special is that we don't see what happens with Sarah and Hagar. We don't see the same thing happening with Pnina. We do not find that Pnina, that Hana ever gets angry with Pnina. The opposite takes place. In actual fact, Hana seems to only worry about herself because she sees the importance of Elkanah having children. In Arshat Yetze, there's a story of, there's a story of, um, I'm sorry, I've got a problem with my camera. I don't know what's happened. Um, please forgive me. Um, one minute. Oh, you haven't got the share screen now. Oh, no. Nathan. I'm afraid I've got a problem. We can see your shared screen. Oh, you can see the shared screen. Okay, great. Okay, then, right. Okay, that's the main thing. So please forgive me, you won't be able to see me. Um, we're going back and forth. You were able. Yeah, I know, because my camera seems to be, seems to be a problem with my camera, uh, the connection. Okay, so we'll leave it at the moment. If it goes, it goes. Right, so if you've got the shared screen, that's the most important. Sorry, please excuse me. Says the story of... of uh, Rachel and Leah is a story about the plants, the Dudaim. And who's going to get those special plants in order to a, for a woman to become pregnant that night? And there, there's a very special statement of the Sfono. He says the following, line number 28, Rodia, Rodia, we see the intention of the mothers acceptable before Akurush Borhu. Where they whole time want to bring in other women in order that they have children. In Yan Hadudaim, and also the subject of the Dudaim, the special plants, Nishmat Filatam Alze. Iraoi the Tzadik. It's befitting for a tzadik, Shiasei Shtadlut Tativi Haifshar Etzlo. That means they want to do as much as Shtadlut, as much trying to do and helping other people, in order to seek chiftso. Bim zen at the same time, yitpalel shiasiga tachli. Therefore, what does Rachel do? Rachel wants, knows that Leah has the ability to have more children. She says, okay, take this special plant. Then what happened? By Yiskoi lokim et Rachel, tishtadla lolid, baachnisa tarata lebeita, ubinyan udulaim. Shem remembers Rachel, the very fact that she gave over those special plants to Leah, 
וישמע אליה אלוהים. Eventually הקדוש ברוך הוא listens, because what happens after this situation, after the story, before the story of Judaim, he has Zilha and Zilpa and Le'a, etc. וישמע אליה שהתפלל אלוהים, שהתפללה אחר שעשתה שני מיני השתדלות. After she does two attempts in order to help Le'a to have more children, הקדוש ברוך הוא help. Now, if we copy this story, our story, we will see Chazal understood the whole story of Penina in the following way. It's written, if we look at it up in the Pasuk, we spoke about it last week, but we didn't speak about this time mentioned in Pasuk Vav. In order that she should beg, she should shout out. That means Nina pushes Chana in order that she should get angry. But get angry with whom? She gets angry with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Lama? Avur harima al Elohim. Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu. At you, Nina, mera'emet ota alai. You make Chana angry on me. Chayecha, by your life. Ein ra'amim she'ein chareya matah. There is no thunder without rain afterwards. Which means to say that what happens here? That Nina makes, makes Chana angry. Angry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When Nina makes her angry, HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises her, there will be rain. Straight away afterwards, I will remember her. Making a person angry on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there is no such thing that there is no rain after thunder. That's what happened. Chana hands over Elkana, Pnina. Pnina has children. Pnina makes Chana want to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And eventually, Chana has children. Now, what are we going to speak about now? What are we going to speak about now? The natural fact, a completely new dimension of understanding marriage, of understanding relationships. Because relationships between husband and wife are perhaps the most important relationship which exists. How does all this take place? Now, First of all, what we call the power of the individual. Asara mamarot, ivraha olam. There are 10 mamarot the world was created. And mata mudlo mar, why does it say us this? Valo bamamar echad yacholi barot. Everything that happened once, in one statement of Akadosh Baruch What does this mean? It means to say, says the Sfat Emet, He's looking the spatter, make the top line. He says the following. You have 10 ma'amarim. The 10 ma'amarim would have been all included in one ma'amar, says the spatter, make. If I had never been in one ma'amar, which is the first ma'amar, there would only be one statement in the world, the chazal. There would never have been details. There would never have been individuals. You would have just had one. And the one would have never been able to fractionalize. You would never be able to divide it. So what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do? He divides everything up. What happens when he divides everything up? In actual fact, everybody then has free choice. This is what I mean. There would be no ability to have because everybody would have been included in that one statement. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu divides up the world, makes up the world into ten ma'amarot, therefore obviously from the one unit comes fractions and comes others, etc., etc. That is the only way whereby man can reveal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Man reveals HaKadosh Baruch Hu not as an individual, 
as a member, a member of a community. And from, in actual fact, the ribui, the maximum population, then comes together the closeness. Let's look at what the Mishnah comes along and tells us. The Mishnah comes along and tells us, Anu Rabbanan, Haro'e Uchlusia Yisrael, a person who sees hundreds of thousands of Israel, members of Am Yisrael, he says, Baruch Hacham Harazim, blessed be the wise who reveals all the secrets. What are all the secrets? She'ein Atam Umam Dume Zelazet. Each person is an individual, and each individual has his own special identity. No individual has an exactly the same face as another individual. Everyone is different. From the one comes the two, and come from the two comes the four, and from the four comes to the eight, etc., etc. And that's what Chazal say in another Mishnah. When a person makes coins, with one signature, with a signature, the seal of Adam Arishon. No individual similar to another individual. Therefore, for me, the world was created. No person, no individual from the beginning of creation till the end of creation will be the same. Because if it will be a copy, a cloned copy, you won't be able to say Bishvili Nivra Olam because somebody was like me 500 years ago. And say Chazal, each individual is completely different. And then comes along the Sfat Emet and says, what have we got here? We've got a world which is made up of fractions. Everybody is totally different. It's a world of separateness. If each individual is different, then automatically each individual pulls, goes in his own personal direction. So how do you then recreate this unity? Everything is a fight. Therefore, what do you do? How do we regain this unity? How do we regain this concept of recreating the unity which is needed? Now, we'll just finish off this statement by a fascinating insight of the Maharal, and then we'll go back to it. The Midrash. A famous non-Jewish maidservant went to Rabbi Yossi ben Chalafta and asked him, what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu busy doing nowadays? From the beginning of creation till now. Say Chazal, V'zabek zivugim, Mek shiduchim. V'to shal ploni, Leploni. V'to shal ploni, Leploni ad an. Hine. Explains the Maharal. The world goes according to the laws of nature. And therefore, the question is, what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu busy doing? If he asks the laws of nature, what is he busy doing? The same way as he brought together Adam and Chava, and every Partnership is a new dimension in the world. The fact that I'm created is nothing new because that is the way it works. But what is the 
פרטית זאת, the way הקדוש ברוך הוא, in actual fact, creates couples, and it has the ability to see who is, who can be with this, who of the two who can create a new family, who בוודאי דבר חדש. שהרי צריך לחבר לכל אחד ואחד זיווג מיוחד, כפי מה שראוי החיבור ביחד. בכל זיווג הוא חיבור מיוחד, ובדבר שהוא עניין פרטי, כמו דבר זה שהוא זיווג עם איש עם אשתו, וכי לכל איש פרטי זה, יש לו אישה פרטית מיוחדת. הקדוש ברוך הוא is busy creating זיווגים. People who can live together in one house. The beginning of life, the beginning of the solution of the Alma de Peruda, the world which is broken apart, where each person has his ego and each person has his own identity, begins, says the Maharal, when you get married. When you begin to be able to live in one house together with another person. And all of a sudden, a person has to break down his ego, has to be able to share. And this concept of sharing and creating new lives, that says the Maharal is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is busy with. He's recreating human beings. If everybody was born, correct, that's nature. But nature is not living together. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu has got to do. Now, this concept is very, very special. Because what it teaches us is that If we go back to our story, what happens now? Chana and Elkanah live in the same house. They live in the same house. And they want to build up a family together. She is the true zivug of Elkanah. That's what happens. But there's one thing missing. Chana cannot procreate together with Elkanah. There's something missing. There's something missing, and we'll explain in a minute what is missing. What is missing is the following. Correct. Two people live in the same house. But sometimes the similarities are so great that in actual fact, they like one person. And therefore, the two opposing forces which exist in the house, the husband and wife, They can't recreate because they're too similar. Let me give you an idea which relates to this. Moshe Rabbeinu can't speak. He's kvad peh. Says the Maharal, why is he kvad peh? Why is he in actual fact doesn't he have the ability to speak? Says the Maharal, a fascinating insight. He says, When Moshe Rabbeinu is too close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's far away from human psyche. When he's far away from human psyche, he becomes more spiritual. The spiritual can't speak. Rabbi Sai. Spiritual hasn't got the same ability to speak as a human being. When two people were too close, They can't procreate. Now, what happens in the story? Let's look what happens in the story. What does she think now, Hana? Hana thinks, Hana thinks, let's go the opposite side. Hana thinks, what's going to be? Elkanah is davening for her. What does Elkanah say to her? Elkanah says to her the following. Elkanah says to her, I'm better than 10 children. Says the Malbim the following. He sees the despair of Hannah. He spoke to her in three and tried to comfort her. And he showed her. Crying, you cry over dead people. 
That's why he says to her, why are you crying, Hannah? Oh, Hashem, you're living. You've got somebody dead in front of you that you're crying? Hasheni. Why aren't you eating? I'm better than ten children. I'm like for you, ten children. So therefore, again, it's so close that Elkanah feels Nachon. For their relationship, they don't need children. Upkeep the relationship. Chana gives up hope. She doesn't have children. She gives over Penina. Elkanah, at the end of the day, also gives up. That is the marriage between Chana and Elkanah. Says Rav Soloveitchi. Dineg. Ad shel Chana. When Chana used to daven, Elkanah was part partner to her trouble. Elkanah why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? I'm better than tell children. Too much of the same. Right. That is the situation. The situation is at the moment that Chana, Chana, has given over Pnina. She cries, but she realizes something wrong. Eventually, Elkanah realizes it. That is their marriage. Their marriage is, in one way, total communication. Everything is together. I'm better than 10 children. What happens now? All of a sudden, Chana realizes that she can't remain, in inverted commas, only a wife. She can't. And all of a sudden, she goes through a metamorphosis. She changes. She becomes an identity. If in before that, she lived within the framework of the power of the individual, the individual in this situation was Elkana and Chana, as one unit. Now, from the power of individual, it comes to be individual power. She overtakes. She decides to take her life into her own hands. And what does she do? She now goes to govern by herself. She doesn't realize, rely on anybody else. Finished. And what does she do now? Let's see what she does. The next part. Please, any questions before I carry on? What I've said is very deep idea, which I haven't bought complete proofs for it. But in the writings of the great Hasidic Rebbers, you see that a lot. Two people who are too equal Either they can't live together or they can't, things break up. They can't create. You need opposing forces, okay? You need something opposition in order to do it. You always need two sides. And if there's one side, then it doesn't work. And that is one of the famous explanations of Reb Nachman of Breslav, which I haven't brought any proofs to, showed you the sources. That's the idea of the Maharal. The idea of the Maharal is Kurzbohu takes two people who are completely opposed. I can't. Okay. There's a problem with my camera. Um, 
רף נחמיה, סליחה, אתה בכוונה אתה מכבה את הקאמרה? לא, לא, יש לי בעיה עם המצלמה שלי. אה, אוקיי, בסדר, מאה אחוז. כאילו, רגע ראינו אותך עכשיו. אני יודע, אני יודע, אני עולה ויורד כל הזמן. אה, אוקיי, בסדר. אני trying to do my best, sorry. אוקיי. It just keeps moving a bit. אוקיי, אוקיי, now it's completely finished. אוקיי, okay, then. Um, it's Hashem, a couple of months time getting myself a new computer, so it'll be okay. Um, right. Any questions, what I've said? Please, I'm open to anything and any questions now. Don't be shy, guys. Doesn't help. Aina by Shan Lamed. Nobody. Okay, I'll carry on then. Okay, I do, I do have a biological question. There's an awful lot of doctors in the audience. Nowadays, through whatever techniques in science, they're able to clone animals. Correct. Are, the, are those cl cloned animals uh, exact reproductions of the DNA all the way down? Or is I'm not a biologist, I'm not a genetics, and I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you. No, I know, I, I understand that, but... In the audience, there are people that might have that, okay. that background. Okay. You can are find there... out afterwards. Oh, okay. We can find out afterwards, unless somebody wants to answer. I don't know, okay? What I've read, cloning is exactly the same DNA, as far as I know. But I'm not a doctor, and what I've read about it in genetic, what's it called? They seem to be, but I'm not sure. Okay, but let's go a bit, let's go one stage further in this, in this story. Chana gives up hope, uh, El Chana gives up hope. And Chana needs to take over new, new, a new identity. What does she do? What she does is the following. She goes to the base of Mikdosh. Goes to the Mishkan. And what does she say? Let's look in the sentences, what it says there. It says the following. It says, He Marat Nafesh. Okay, she is completely despondent. But it palel al Hashem, b'chotivke. But ido neder, she makes a neder. Batome, batomar, Hashem tzvakotim. Raot ire boni amatecha. If you look at the affliction, uschartani will remember me. Lo tishkach et amatecha, etc., etc., etc. Then. Therefore, four things happen now. Let's look in the Malbim. He, as it kapsu arbad varim, ozrim al shetiye filata bratzon. The first thing, shehi haita marat nafesh. She was bitter. What does it mean, bitter? Now, it's only twice. Two other places in the whole of the Tanakh where the term Marat Nafesh or similar concept, two words appear. The first one is in line number 110. We're talking about the Isha Shunamit. The Isha Shunamit, the woman where Elisha stays with, and also she hasn't got any children, and Elisha promises a child. It's the Haftarah of Pashat Vayera. Then he dies. He says, Roshi, Roshi, my head, my head. What happened? She runs to Elisha. And she gets hold of his feet. Gechazi tries to push her away. Her soul is bitter. Vashem elim mi meni velo igidli. Marat nafesh is used here. Her soul is so bitter that Hashem promised her something. It's taken away from her. Chana is the same. She feels she's got a, a body of a woman. And the power of birth has been taken away. Sefer mishlei. It's written, Lev Yodea Marat Nafsho. Only the heart knows how much 
the soul is bitter. The simchaton is in happiness. Fila never ever be done by other people. As much as Elkanah tried to daven, as, as much as she tried to, in order to push herself, and to allow Elkanah to have children and to daven that way, didn't help. So what does she think? I'll do mitzvahs. I'll allow Elkanah to have children. All well and good. I've done my ishtadlut. Hashem will listen to me. Elkanah, she also gives up. Now she has new dimension. She has a new personality. She feels herself. Something which only an individual, and that's why I said the individual power. Each person has this individuality where he could relate. And only he knows, Lev, your dea, near the word means, doesn't mean only know cognitively, but feels. Says the Sfatemet, Vine ikar avodat adam ubelev uvemoach. Fila balev. Lovdo becholavavchem ubechol nafshechem zut fila. Yeshte levavot. Lev acham velev kasil. Lachem trechem avoda belev. That's why you need. Your, you work in your heart, your emotions. Alidei zekativ, lev yodea marat nafsho. Noni v'tzichim la'avod ematek ze hamarirut. The person needs to know how to add sugar, sweeten this bitterness of the heart. Now, it's an emotion which only the, only the individual knows. Nobody else, everybody can else can empathize. Everybody can else can empathize, but nobody can feel. And this feeling is now what happens to Hana. All of a sudden, she realizes it's her battle. She's the one who's got to feel Marat Nafsho. Let's go back to the Malbim. She atzma haita Marat Nafesh, line number 105. Hashem shomea tfilat nishbere lev. Hashem listens to those whose hearts are broken. She davens only to Hashem. She doesn't daven that Elkanah should be good and this one should be good. No. Only about herself. The gates of, of tears are never locked. This can happen at the time of trouble. So therefore, Chana realizes she has to begin from a start. She has to create, rely on herself. And that's what I mean. She goes from a wife to becoming an individual, a woman, an individual. And therefore, she is Marat Nafesh. Batit Palela Lashem. Vahaya, line number 95. Vahaya. Palel, the more she davened, if Hashem. He just looks at her. He stares and says, You know this woman who's in front of me. She's speaking to herself. She's drunk. Because what happens when a person gets motivated in davening? He starts off quietly. And he starts by himself. And slowly, slowly, he gains enthusiasm. But she doesn't show any external, anything external, no external emotions at all. Nothing. And Ali thinks, you're this woman. It's not natural. It's not natural that people don't show any external emotions. And that's why he thinks perhaps she's drunk. She's not, she's not in her abil cognitive abilities. Nelly thinks, no, she's not governing, she's playing around here. Because what? If Lev Yodea Marat Nafsho, I don't want to show any external emotions. I've been doing this all my life, says Hannah. All my life I've been doing external things. I've been pushing Elkanah to marry somebody else. I've been relying, I've been bringing Elkanah to Daven for me. No, no more external. Everything is 
internal. And that's why I'm not willing to show any emotions. Let's look at how the al explains it in line number 127. We're now going to explain some of the extra terminologies which is in the sentence. he thought he was a clever woman. She knows. This is what's going to happen. No, for half an hour, he's completely silent. In Safek, she speak Mashit Palela at Kolishut Fila. Bata and now Titanel Bokol Ram. She's going to start showing emotion. She's going to speak a bit louder. Alkane, Yashomer, Umam Tinek Pia, Shahat Fila Balacha, she did Bakola, Bitana Bakol, Vishmain Yana, Uvirota, Jodama Hazeke, the Berali Bash is only speaking to her heart. As Hashva, Shikora, Zeo, etc., etc. Therefore, Hana keeps everything herself. Nothing. She doesn't show anything, any external emotions. And therefore, what happens? What happens is the following. How does she explain her behavior? She explains her behavior the following. Tan Hana Batomar, Lo Adoni, Isha Shat Ruach Anuchi. I'm a woman who's gone through hard spirits. Shat ruach. Yain v'sheichar lo shatiti. Eshpoch et nafshi lifnei Hashem. And I'm pouring out my soul before Hashem. Shfichat hanefesh. Think to yourself the terminology of the word shficha. When you pour out something, you empty out when you pour out a glass of wine. You pour everything into it. I poured everything. I've got nothing left, says Chana. Nothing left. I poured out everything which I've got. Therefore, she says, Don't think that I'm some woman who's been playing around. I've poured out all my anger and my feelings towards HaKadosh Baruch That is her tefillah. When Eli hears that, he says to her, Vayom Vayan Eli Vayomer Bechila Shalom Go back home Velohei Yisrael Yiten et Sheilatech Asher Sha'alt Me'imo Let's look at the Radak, what he says, and then we'll go back to the sentence. Line number 140, 144. Your prayer will be heard. Now what's special about this pasuk? We go back to the sentence. Let's see how it's written. It's written, Yoan Eli Vayomar. Look at the play on the word. There's a missing Aleph. It should have been. Now, the word She'ela, question, comes from the word also, the word Shin Lamed Hei, Bishlot. Pour out. The word sh or shlal, spoil, they're all the same letters, they're all the same words. Shelatech means all what you've poured out to Akadosh Baruch Hu, all what you've taken off. Right? Written many times in Tanakh, the word shela means a person has taken off. 
all what you've taken off for yourself. Have done? Shit. Okay, and that's why it's missing. It's not just she'elatech, your question. It's more than that. It's all what you've poured out towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, should Hashem should give you. All what you asked from Him. That's what it means. This story is better at least come to realize that what's happened here is something phenomenal. Women didn't usually come to Daven. She has created in front of Eli power of tefillah. That's what she's created. She's created the ability for a woman She has shown to Eli the power of tefillah. And that's what we're talking about. Chana, the woman. Chana, the wife. Chana, the wife who's mit batelet, who pushes herself, who relies totally on her husband. And her husband totally says, I'm better than 10 children. What happens then? Chana takes her life into her own hands. She begins to realize, I can't rely on anybody else. I'm not going to show anybody else what I'm feeling. I don't want empathy. I want to speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. comes the last stage. The last stage of the story is Chana Hatima. Chana the mother. Right. Vayhi litkufat ayamim. Nine months later. Vatar vat Chana vatelet ben vatikrat shmo shmuel ime Hashem she'il tiv. I've borrowed him from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's go back to what Eli says to her. Eli says to her the same concept. She says to him, he says to her before, what does he say? He says, Hashem yitain et she'latech, she sha'alt me'imo. What does she say? Nachon, what I asked for him is really his. I asked from him something which belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Sheyeshbo says the Malbim, Sheyeshbo Shnei Milot. Two words. The word Shmuel is two words. It's not like we usually interpret it, Shama Kel. It could also be interpretation of the word Shmuel. Shama Kel, Hashem listened. No, it's not that Hashem Shama. What is it? It is. Shaul Me'el. He is borrowed from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu something. Sha'al I asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu something. Hashem gives me back the same thing which I asked him. It's borrowed. Sheila and Sheila. Two words with different meanings. Sheila is asking. And Shaul is also borrowing. Why? Because when you ask somebody something from somebody, he is borrowing his knowledge, the other person's knowledge. When I give an answer to somebody, I'm giving over mine to him. I'm lending him something which belongs to me. Chana feels that whatever I ask from Akurush Baruch Hu, I'm going to lend him back to Akurush Baruch Hu. And that's Chana the mother, the same Masirut Nefesh, which she shows towards her husband and giving over and giving over Pnina and Elkanah feels it she now feels the same thing towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu absolute Mr. Nefesh Atikra et Shemo Shmuel please take note Shmuel doesn't Elkanah usually the husband gives the names no here it's she who gives the name all of a sudden, Chana becomes her own individual personality. She doesn't go. Shviat 
And that's what happens to Shmuel. And what does she do? Then even afterwards, it's written, Ushmuel Mesharet, in next chapter, we'll speak about it later on. Ushmuel Mesharet et Pnei Hashem, Nar Chagor Eifot Bad. Umeil Katon Tase Lo Imo, Valata Lo Miyamim Yamina Balotai Tisha. She used to go up. Ubarech Eliet El Kanavet Ishto Vama Yasem Hashem Lach Zera Minaisha Azot. Tachat Hashela Asher Sha'al Lashem. The word Sha'al. Instead, Hashem will give you a seed in place of the object which she has borrowed from Hashem. The word Sha'ila. Eli speaks about the Sha'ila. Hana speaks about the Sheila, and Eli again speaks about the Sheila. Muel now becomes the symbol of a child who is borrowed. And that is Hana, the mother. Hana, the mother, has gone through a massive change. If before she was totally connected to her husband, now all of a sudden she has her own identity. And she has her own, own identity as far as the motherhood is concerned. She will decide what to do with the child. And that is the question. That is the identity of Chana. And once Chana has gone through all this, then we go through her tefillah. That Rabotai is Chana. Hana has taught the world. Hana has taught everybody what it means to daven. First of all, what it means to be a wife. Elkanah has taught us what it means to be a husband. What it means to be a husband. What it means also to empathize, to feel for her. Hana does the same thing. But she feels still wants something of her own and therefore she uses the concept of she'ila of borrowing of asking of begging the term of she'ila is perhaps the most important dimension of man's relationship with HaKadosh Baruch borrowing and that's what she taught the world and that's why this haftara is on the first day of Rosh Hashanah the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the day HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates man, that is Rosh Hashanah, Hayom Harat Olam. This is the day when Hashem created the world and the day when a person relates to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the correct way. What happens? What a person's got to feel on that? person's got to feel on that day that every single thing which he has is in actual fact loan. We borrowed from Hashem. And if a person perceives that feeling, then he can go towards HaKadosh Baruch on Rosh Hashanah. That's what Hannah taught us. The power of the individual, the individual power the power of one, the power of tefillah, the power of everything which goes with it. And that, in actual fact, is the secret of Hana. And that's why Hana has become a symbol of tefillah, of the Sirot Nefesh, and she, in actual fact, is considered one of the Sheva Neviot, but we haven't spoken about the dimension of the prophecies of Hana. But the next thing we're going to speak about is the story of Eli, the Kohen Gadol. That Rabotai, we've discovered Fila, Kana, Nina, Kana. Questions, please. Right, yeah. I've let every, okay. everybody right. can speak. Yes, Harold. Okay. So, based on this uh, description of the. Uh, of, 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 of how she was davening. And from the pre prior share a few months ago, uh, the fact that uh, from her uh, way uh, of davening 
we learn all of the Shimona Esrei was modeled right. after, yeah. et cetera. How is it then that pre, uh, in some, in many circles, the method of praying has become much more uh, externalized with a lot of movement, gesticulations, uh, you know, crying out, uh, as which seems to be inconsistent with the description here of of Chana and the way she davened. I mean, you know, I'm I think that uh, the Rav Rav Seilovechik, you know, I never saw him, but what I've been told would when he davened, he would stand there. You couldn't hear anything from him, and he was motionless, which seems to be consistent with this image of Hannah. But it's not with the image of Eli. Eli, okay. Now all the question is, what is Tfila? Okay, and here is a fascinating talk of Rav Soloveitchik. What is Tfila? Is Tfila basically a feeling of man's distancing from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay? That's one dimension. The dimension of Marat Nafesh. How much is a person Marat Nafesh? Eli feels that in order to be able to daven, you have to go through a process. A process of, first of all, internalizing it, and then externalizing it because if a person doesn't feel he davens it won't work and that's why there's a necessity of all my bones should feel the davening and if my little finger doesn't feel the davening what is it or it's only my soul which is davening what is davening here my body or my soul Okay, so here you have all my, all my bones. That's what Eli expects. Eli expects that from the internalization will go the externalization. That's why he thinks that Chana is what? What does Chana say? No. And it's deep, deep down. I can't show any emotions. I've finished with emotions. I've finished with showing people what I feel. Chana is so desperate. She's only one person. Let's think of it, okay? Is Chana a monologue or a dialogue? Okay, Chana feels it's a monologue. He can only cry out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, okay? If HaKadosh Baruch Hu hears, all well and good. If he doesn't hear, he doesn't hear. I've got to show, show what I feel. If it's a dialogue, then the same way as when you speak, Harold, you use your hands, etc., etc., then I can use my hands to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chana was so desperate that she only feels she could have a monologue because on the other side, she doesn't know what's going on. Okay. And that's the way it is. That means there are two dimensions, but that is the argument between Chana and Eli. Eli feels there's a necessity to externalize. And Chana says, in my situation, you can't expect it from me. Okay, Harold? Comment. Okay. Comment. Um, yes. I find this treatment... Uh, absolute invitation to emotional disaster and nervous breakdown. If we all had a deafen like this every day, I think we would be in cuckoo land. The fact I, is, what I've seen here is an extreme need, a deep felt need that maybe once, one day a year in Yom Kippur, we actually feel this way. Realistically, I don't think anybody here on this screen, and I put myself in the same category, could live with the emotional intensity that we heard. It was beautiful, it was spiritual, but it's the type of thing that you need when you have a terrible need. But mostly our tefillot are thanks to God for the goodness he has given us. And we do know that if we pray intensely, there's a chance, maybe, no guarantees, that we will get a response. Uh, I agree with you, Phil. That's why Chazal only chose this for first day Rosh Hashanah to Daven. Yeah. That's why. I agree with you. I'm not, I'm, uh, okay. But if you want to learn the concepts of tefillah, of deep emotional tefillah, Chana is the architect. Well, you're also saying 
that husbands or wives should not be identical uh, and get along well, that there has to be a difference between them. Uh, I think we work very hard to find commonalities with our spouses. True, true, but there's always, there'll always be two perspectives, man for Mars and women for Venus. And if man is too close to Venus or Venus is too close to Mars, you're gonna have two people the same. There always has to be a diff sort of difference. There has okay? to be independence of thought and an accumulation of cooperation. Crew but agreed, agreed, but if there's too much on either side, okay? That's what the Hasidut developed. There's always got to be what we called Ichud Ha'afachim. That means the unity of opposing forces. Shamayim Va'aretz. Yes. Okay? Okay? Man, man has... To, he, that's what in the, in the Olam of, in the world of Rav Kook, the world of Hasidut, they spoke, spoke a huge amount of what we called Ichud Ha'afachim. The ability or V'choshech, light and darkness being in one unit. Everything ah. has to be balanced, but there'll always be two forces. And if one force, there'll only be, just think to yourself, I remember, I rem I'll give you an example, Phil. I remember seeing some YouTube, okay? One of the worst tortures which exist that a person will only see light. If you go into a room where everything is white and the light is white and the walls are white and the clothes are white and everybody who comes to you is white, the whole ability of man is to see colors, is to see differences. And through the differences, he creates harmony. Okay, the harmony is the most important concept in the world. If there's too much of one thing, then it's tragedy. And also in marriage, if there's two things, if there's, if as what you correct, what you correctly said, there's always a concept of harmony where there are two, th two ideas and collective and, and creating the harmony in the house. And that's the greatness. Children will always see the harmony, okay? And not necessarily the unification because unification is not always good. And that's what Elkanah says. I'm better than 10 children. I'm like you, we're all white together. Hannah says, it can't be. And that's what the objective of the, the idea of Ichud Afachim. The ability to see different colors in the world, the ability to see different dimensions, the ability to create ideas, and through the ideas, you create the harmony of the ideas. But there's only one, then it becomes dictatorship. Uh, so the point is, you want harmony, which is difference, but working together. Exactly, uh, like an orchestra. And not just copycat. True, correct. Copycat's the worst thing. You have to be, it, it, it has to be complimentary. I, I, I've i seen in my own children that the, the best marriages of my own children are those where the two people are not so much alike, but they complement each other. Oh. Uh, where a marriage uh, where the two people are very much alike, what they tend to do is they tend to exacerbate each uh, their own weaknesses because they have the same weaknesses and that doesn't go well. So I, I, I think that this framework and this structure that has been described, I think it, it, wor it does work. And it is uh, the real world that a complementary uh, uh, type of structure is much better than a uniform uh, structure uh, that only exacerbates, as I said, it can, it can it can strengthen people's strengths, but it can exacerbate their weaknesses because they feed upon each other. Uh, I, I would agree. Right, everybody. Next uh, next year, we're going to be, so we've spoken about the triangle of Elkanah, Pnina, and Chana. The triangle, Mitz Hashem, will carry on next time. We'll speak about Eli and his family. Have a happy Hanukkah. Keep well, guys. Happy Hanukkah, everybody.